Sven Arlesson is a research professor at the School of Engineering and Natural Sciences at University of Iceland. Along with teaching young PhDs, Dr. Olofsson worked in hydrogen storage research before his interest in LNER arose, and that led him to Dr. Leif Holmlid's work with ultra-dense hydrogen. Welcome, Dr. Svein Olofsson. Hi. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, I've got to get the first question, Alan, because yeah. um, Dr. Olofsson, I, I interviewed you back in 2019, and you gave a tremendous tutorial on what ultra dense hydrogen was, how you measured it, and why it might be important. Can you give us an update? Uh, on what's been happening lately, starting with just a brief description of uh, what it is you're measuring, and do you still think it's part of cold fusion? Well, I have been busy doing a lot of uh, experimental building, and then also together with Sindri in Norway, the PhD student, and, and things have been slow, but. Uh, I just want to introduce you what this hydrogen is, and, and it's a kind of a beast study because uh, although we have a very good instruments here in Iceland, as you see, we can we can do a lot of different things, and and we are doing more, say, normal science, usually with thin films and such stuff, and 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 but. Uh, UHD or, or ultra high density hydrogen is something we, I started to look in 2014 with Leif and later with Sintra. And uh, what it is, is still in 2021, uh, a little bit hard to, to say what it is, because uh, we have been replicating some of Leif's work, but uh, usually we can replicate experiments, but we are sometimes in, in, in problems of confirming his interpretations, and uh, that is the status today, basically. But uh, I think what the Rydberg state of matter is pretty right. I mean, it is just that uh, you have hydrogen, and, and, and uh, when you excited to, to higher quantum states uh, on top of the surface, it is a possibility that uh, the normal H2 molecule is not formed. And, and in such a way, you get a huge molecule, which is actually has to stay on a surface. So if, if you see, see this proton, the red dot there, uh, then uh, instead of having the electron occupying the deep uh, the well, it, it's actually staying more in between, uh, uh, far away with the, the more distance between protons and, 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 and they're forming this very huge molecule. And uh, uh, it's only yeah, Leif who has uh, done this research and, 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 and that is, uh, it's very strange that uh, some people have not joined this, his uh, work, but uh, what we have been studying is, is that uh, is, uh, you see that here is a, a proton who is uh, residing on top of a catalyst. And we think that the, this uh, huge molecular structure is stable on, on, on the surface. And, and when it's stable on that surface, it finally can go away and, and be transported out of the surface and, and then it's a free molecule in, in space and, and stable for a while. And this is just the Rydberg state. The Leif has talked about the ultra high density states and, and, and for some good reasons. And- uh, Sorry, Sven, if I, if, if I could ask a question. Yeah. I, I noticed on that slide, you mentioned the potassium ion catalyst. Yeah. yeah. Are you, is this still your favorite, uh, Catalyst, I, I remember Sindre telling me he, that they were, had a big program at Norum uh, to research different catalysts, yeah? But yeah, they, have start, they have started that and, and, and of course it, it's very slow. Uh, I mean, there's one person doing this and I know that they are doing something, mm -hmm. but 
I'm just using the same same uh, catalyst as before, but uh, I think uh, we have used uh, many different kinds of of of, of, of catalysts, both from China and and even, and even from from uh, other other uh, people, and, and and they seems to all work. Mm -hmm. Although you need a laser to to see something happening, and and but. The, just to say why there is a different uh, state uh, from the first state I, I, I described is, is this result here from Lathe that yeah. he's shooting a laser under this catalyst. And while he's doing this, he is seeing time of flight, which is, 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 is too short to be actually a, a, a normal hydrogen or even a, a Rydberg matter as I described earlier. And uh, I think that uh, I, I have to show you maybe this. Uh, this has never been seen or, or published before because the, the, what you see in picture A is the laser spot just under the, the catalyst. Right. And, uh, uh, and there's just, this, it's very tightly focused 20 micrometers or something like with a lens. Wow. And this is just a five nanosecond laser. And, and when you move from A to B, uh, you see I'm, I'm moving the spot further away from uh, a little bit left from the catalyst. Mm -hmm. and on the left side, there is a metal plate. And then this strange behavior came, comes up. It's like that the, the, the plate and this uh, face are interacting in some manner and, and, and creating this, this pattern of, of diffraction. Mm -hmm. and, and are you seeing ablation on the plate as well? Yes, yes. And finally, in, in the last picture. Mm. And uh, and when, when you keep moving closer and closer, and finally in picture G and H, uh, the laser is the, hitting this foil, tantalum foil, directly. And uh, then, then I, I, we see this, that, that the, we have seen this time of flight picture like here, which we are still confirming because uh, you see that we are, are, are you're yeah. seeing something that looks like a, 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 a speed of 0.95, uh, uh, which is very high, <laughs> and uh, I don't believe these results still. <laughs> no. I have to repeat them. And, and as you see, uh, yeah. Leif is normally seeing maybe 0.6 or 0.5, and Cinder also. So I'm the only one who has been seeing this past. But uh, but I'm I'm putting the beam line up again and 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 trying to see if if. Uh, I can repeat this, and of course you have to rule out so many possible explanation. And uh, you can see this setup here. Here's the laser on the right side, and 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 and, and then the time of flight tube there. Yeah. And now it's completely different. And but I have not started to measure again because now it looks like this. It's a tree of many stuff. Mm. Wow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a lot of money on the hoof there as well. <laughs> Gorgeous. And and basically, like I have two targets and and, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully this will be available soon for experiments. Yeah. And and, and yeah. like uh, you see, there's an X-ray detector there uh, coming up, mm -hmm. like Japanese people are doing in their research. In 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 mm. the. And um, and also I have a collimator, so I, I would be able to uh, maybe collimate uh, so only one particle is flying through this beam line at a time. Yeah. And then and then you see that the the, the, the detector here. I can yeah. use this to, to measure the energy and everything, and 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 confirm this that this is a particle. Now, Leif has stated that these are, are muons or, or mesons, and I, I cannot say yes or no. 
I will just know when I measure this if, if it's possibly a, a proton, a very fast proton rather than a muon, which yeah. is not as drastic uh, physics a as very a scary animal as well, a very fast proton. Um, yeah. I think he has a question for you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, this is uh, how things looked in, in Leif's lab, which is now has been. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. dismantled because he, he is not able to, to work uh, because yes, of I, I, we we heard he had some health problems a while yeah. ago yes and uh, that his wife had fin actually finished off his paper I believe uh, um, the um, uh, just going on from Leaf's uh, inability to work um, I did hear uh, that Sindre was off to America and uh, that maybe Noron was going to shut down, but is that true or not? No, they're, they're still operating in Norway, and and and, uh, and we hope for, hopefully uh, we focus now on that, that the center will finish his PhD, and, and and but there are also many strange questions still looming. Yes. And, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the news is that uh, I I got. Uh, Finally, financing from the Icelandic Research Fund in January, which basically means that I can hire maybe one and a half people in Iceland in this project. So, and uh, mm. that will help a lot. So, so, so at the moment, then, then uh, I'm financing Sindri to, to finish his PhD on that money. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, yeah. Of course, I'm applying for more. <laughs> <laughs> Funding is always hard to find, and always good news when it comes. I'm pleased that you have been that, yeah. that you're getting funding. Yes, yeah. Okay. And like, if you look on the picture on, on the uh, bottom to to the right, and I'm trying to calibrate these these coils. Uh huh. <laughs> so I will know this uh, charts of this particle who's going because. If it's positive, uh, we will see it, or if it's negative, and, yeah. and, and, and so on. Dr. Olofsson, so you're not really sure what exactly is flying out of this yet? No, I, I'm not sure. Uh, everything is open. And, but, that's, uh, and that's what you're going to measure with that device. What exactly is flying out of this? Yeah. I mean, the, there's a possibility that actually we are, are making a very fast uh, proton acceleration only. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as a proton has an energy, you say 10 MeV and plus, and if, if it hits another uh, deuterium or any uh, lithium or any such elemental, then you're just ripping out neutrons in, in the collisions. So therefore, you see the, my radiation monitoring stuff here. So I can uh, follow uh, the radioactivity in, in my lab now, 24 hours, and, and uh, make a uh, just uh, me uh, yeah, you make a measurements uh, and uh, every say 200 seconds. Mm -hmm. So you see that I have a neutron detector there, uh, I have a gamma detector there, and, and I have this special. Uh, lathe neon type detector, which is so mysterious the signal he gets, and we have seen. So, and here you see that, for example, I have a, a neutron source there, which I can use to see if if, if neutrons are affecting uh, this uh, uh, lathe's uh, detector, and, and and they are not affecting it in any way. And then I have just a cloud chamber, and, and I'm gonna sh 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 let you show you some new movie afterwards. And uh, this uh, muon detector was Leif started with is simple. It's just a PMT and an aluminum foil. Mm -hmm. And you see this the uh, red uh, curve here, without active chamber. It's there's no activity. And then we have active chamber and, and, and then this detector is de 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 detecting this stuff. The problem with this detector, it's, it's, it's impossible to calibrate any energy out of this, although we have published paper out it, about it, but I don't believe in it. 
it, it, it is very difficult. I, I, I'm well aware of the problems of trying to not just measure radiation, but decide what it might be. Yeah, yeah. it's, uh, you know, at some level it's elementary, but then the, when yeah. you dig deeper, it becomes more and more complicated. Yeah. yeah. And um, can I ask you, yeah. have you seen any transmutation in, in your work? I, I, I have no possibility to measure that. I mean, um, I don't have any sims who, who could do that or in any such measurement unit. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, you see that uh, this is the data in Norway where we have this uh, non-heated chamber before and after. So we have this huge signal increase in this, this yeah. strength detector and same here in Iceland. <laughs> and now I show you a movie. This is just a cloud chamber, and and uh, and everybody knows uh, cloud chamber tracks for alpha and beta. And if you see these tracks, which are coming up, they look, don't look like uh, alpha or beta. Some of them are like beta, and and now so you will see one like here, this one, and mm. and, and this one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it, where's this cloud chamber located? Is that uh it, it's just in the in the lab. In between oh wow. Yeah. Hmm. And uh if you move this upstairs where I'm sitting there, there's nothing like this. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> has seen this and, and so on, so so well, it's coming from the experiment. Yes. So when you have heated the uh, chamber and, 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 and put some laser on it. And, and hmm. it's, it's good. Well, um, do you think this has anything to do with the cold fusion reaction, the Lenner reaction, the heat reaction that we are all hoping will turn into a technology? Yes, uh, otherwise I would not be attend attending the, uh, the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there are so many questions we are trying to finalize here with, with the centrist uh, uh, PhD work. So, but we have to finish these questions and, 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 and then we, we will move on and, 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 and try to do something which is more like, a, yeah, Standard cold fusion uh, research, but yeah. so may maybe end of this year uh, we will probably be able to close these questions we are, which we are trying to to do. And and uh, the money I got for uh, this research fund was tried to was to try to find the methods to characterize this this uh, uh, Rydberg phase more. Mm -hmm. Like detecting it uh, on top of surface and and, and seeing uh, how much of it is made and so on and, and make a special instrument for that. So so uh, at the end of this year it, it will be more like that we are be trying to monitor this this feedback phase better and and not to, not with the with the, these high energy laser experiments. Well, I'm trying. To, Sniff it more. As, as a boy who likes toys, I've got to say, it's fascinating stuff. It really is, absolutely. Could, could I ask you, have you um, any sort of suggestions? Uh, people often talk to me about replicating experiments, experiments like Lee Pomlin's work, yeah. Mm. Do you have any thoughts on that? What, you know, what's an acceptable part of your work that somebody could replicate, maybe? Yeah. Well, we can replicate these time of flight measurements and, and everything he sees, we see. But when we try to use uh, more robust methods of, say, detecting muons, they don't show up anything like mm. that. Because muons are actually easier to, to see. So this strange uh, the radiation we see, and, and, and but not uh, a real 
muon signal like we would expect to see. Mm -hmm. Though, of course, muons come in several flavors, though it yeah. may be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they, if, well, uh, the, the intensity that, that Leif is claiming is that uh, your, your room should light up with, with radioactivity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you but, look very healthy to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, see a, we see a signal, but, uh, but we don't see this strong expected phase. Like when a muon comes to stop, it usually sends out x-rays, a lot of x-rays and, and gammas. And yeah. mm. So we, do, we don't see that. But, so we, I suspect that uh, the, uh, these uh, pictures here probably indicate that we are accelerating the protons in the Rydberg phase. Mm -hmm. or yeah. UHD phase to a huge okay. uh, kinetic energy. Yeah, so mm. <laughs> what you're saying to me suggests that this is not something uh, that, that somebody with a, with a garage lab could easily do. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, Yag lasers, lasers are easy to get hold of and not even particularly expensive. But yeah. Yeah. Doing, doing the experiment is one thing, but... Um, in the, yeah. actually working out what's happening, you need very sophisticated equipment, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we've got to wrap it up now. So thank you so much for talking today and giving yeah. us an update on what's happening. It sounds like you're really making some progress on determining what this matter is. And... Um, I hope you're going to come back and when you figure it out and we'll be ready to hear what exactly is this stuff. Yeah. Uh, where can people go if they want to find out more about your work and ultra dense hydrogen? Well, uh, Leif Holmed is, is the main source of it and, and, and mm -hmm. he, he has mostly been uh, uh, doing a lot of different stuff before he did these uh, laser time of flights. Mm. So, so he, has, he has published a lot and, 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 and a lot of different interpretations which we are not yet able to confirm. So, so, so yeah. read Leif Holmit and, and try to, to, to interpret in not fully yet. That's right. And of course, much of Leif Holmit's work is on yeah. research. Yeah. So. You can find but, it there. Yeah, but when you measure, we see the same thing. But uh, I, I, going so far as he has done is, is not uh, the right now at this time. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it's true to say you're on a journey to Mars, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and happy landings. Yes, I, I'm really looking forward to actually seeing more results and, and, and more published work from you. Yeah, it's been great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue this conversation on lennerforum.com, and that's where you can find some more of these episodes of our Lenner Forum Cold Talk. So uh, until next time, keep it cold. <laughs> Thank you, Svan. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.